I'm your host, Chadillac, with the Cage Rage Podcast. I'm Miguel Dorati, the archivist at the International Brotherhood of Prize Fighters. I'm glad to join you here at the Cage Rage Podcast. Hey, so tell me about the shirt, Miguel. Um, I, there's probably too many to run down, but at least tell me about the about the main ones on the shirt because your shirt represents champion Jewish boxers throughout history. Can you can you give me a little rundown on each one of them, or at least the ones that matter the most to you? Yep. I mean, first, uh, can, can you, you know, set back so the set back so the audience can see it? Kind of hold your shirt up. I will. Do it now. Tranquility. Tranquility. Don't make me. It's <sighs> better. Look at him pumping his chest up. So here's the deal. The bottom line is, is first, uh, in answer to your rant and rave about Mr. Trump and, and the whole shenanigans there, it's like, you know, maybe Trump needed it. Certainly the dude in Pittsburgh who went into a synagogue and needed it. Um, you know, maybe they needed a little young Joe Joinsky in their life who kicked their butt in, at the age of 12 and they would have learned some goddamn respect and we wouldn't have had to deal with some of what we're having to deal with. I think a lot of it, um, what's disrespect is when you don't know people, when, when you, you don't even know what you hate, you know? So, um, yeah, maybe a Jewish kid would have beat them up as a young, young certain that causes him to go in there. So I don't know, I'm not a psychologist, but I do think an ass whooping... Uh, early on, might have straightened some things out. You know, sometimes it's like, oh, my father. You know, sometimes people would say, oh, my father used to hit me as a kid. It's like, you know, if I'm fucked up, it's because my father didn't hit me enough. So I'm I'm good with that. You know, so we'll leave we'll leave the Trump stuff like that. Maybe I wish I wish somebody had kicked their ass when they were a kid. Maybe they would have learned some respect. You know, um, in terms of the boxers on the shirt, we got Barney Ross. Uh, you know, one of the all-time greats, obviously, is feud, you know, with uh, Kanzanari and J- uh, Jimmy McLaren, uh really highlighted uh, boxing in the 30s. Uh, Lou Tendler right there with the group. Uh, Benny Leonard, a lightweight champion from uh, the um, uh, from the Jack uh, uh, Dempsey era in the 20s. Um, an interesting character also. All of them, the, the fact is, is every single one of them is an interesting character, you know. Battling, battling Levinsky also from the 30s, and then Slapsy Maxie, Maxie Rosenblum, who went on to, you know, kind of become famous in Hollywood in the 50s and stuff like that afterwards, after his boxing career. He's a guy with uh, over 300 fights and something like 15 knockouts or something like that. The guy known as Slapsy Maxie just like to come in and, uh, you know, get his points and not even hurt you. But, God, it's almost like an annoying or... Or did, could you imagine being beat by a guy who didn't hurt you just because he just scored on you constantly? Kind of like so, um, Chris yeah. Bird. The the heavyweight? Yeah. Chris Bird wasn't exactly a knockout artist. He'd just come out there and kind of paw you and slap you and you couldn't hit him. And, you know, he, just, he, yeah, he was a, but, he was a beautiful I, I fighter. No, I love Chris Bird, but I, I don't... Uh, not, not a fair comparison? No, no, no. Slapsy Maxie took it to a whole new level. You, you got to look him up. You so you're talking about up. literally slapping. Yeah. And, Sla- and I mean, slap- know, wait, a minute. Go, wait a minute. Say it for me again. Is it Slapsy, Slapsy Maxie? Yep, yeah, that's his nickname. I didn't make that up. <laughs> he's going he's gonna to bitch slap you. Kapow. But, but that's the thing is, is to a certain point they were all and they were all boxing under the Jewish flag. You know, they were Jewish boxers, yeah. proud of their heritage and stuff. And now it's almost like, you know, there are a couple of Jewish boxers that are out there. That, you know, nowadays and things like that. Um, uh, Yuri Foreman is is one that you know recently uh, yeah. fought. You know, in the last year or so, and 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 definitely carries the star David with him and stuff like that. But I think they're few and far between. I think. That's almost a little bit of a shame. Maybe, you know, maybe there's not a lot of Jews boxing anymore, but, you know, maybe that's for other reasons, you know. It's like maybe it's it, they don't want to show themselves or, you know, it's not, you know, is it safe to be a Jew in public anymore, you know what I mean? But back in those days, they, they I think it was always, you know, they always had a stereotype and stuff like that, but at some point they'd overcome certain things, you know what I mean? 
and they could be characters and they could be Jewish characters and you could think about, you know, oh, you know, it's going to be hard to negotiate with them and whatever stereotypes and you could almost, you know, at what point is, are you crossing a line telling those things, you know, before you're actually machine gunning people, you know what I mean? It's yeah. like we can talk about those things. I don't, I, mean, I don't think anything we've said is offensive there. It's an acknowledgement that they were Jews, you know? I think that they, that's nothing more that they wanted to be remembered as Jews. Well, look, as, as far as our audience is concerned, or as far as anyone's concerned, if we offend somebody, you know, tell us about it. We, we want to hear about it. Talk to us about it and let us know. Subscribe below. Put your comments down and tell us what you think about what we're talking about here. We don't want this to be a two-way conversation, although we seem to be having a lot of people that are really enjoying it, and we're getting more and more um, listeners all the time, and our audience is, is definitely growing very, very quickly, much much more quickly than we thought it would. Um, we're still not getting a lot of the comments that we'd like to hear. And so I think this is the perfect application for, for our audience to join into this commentary and tell us where you're at with this. Because I know I, I know there's a thousand white guys that just heard me say, you know, white privilege this, white privilege that, that are saying, that fucking son of a bitch, he needs to be shot himself and blah, 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 and, you know, I'm going to get a mail bomb. And, and uh, you know, there, there's, there's, a, there's a thousand people that are thinking this or thinking that. Instead of just thinking about it, we want to talk about it. And I'm all right with ethnicity, you know, as long as the ethnicity is presented correctly, you know what I mean? Is there anything wrong with rooting for uh, 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 Lomachenko in boxing or Usyk in boxing if you like Ukrainians? You know, are you, are you on top of things enough to know that they're not Russians, they're Ukrainians, and that if they fought right. a Russian, there's going to be some rivalry there, very similar to maybe an American... Uh, from the north and from the south, or an American, uh, white American versus a black American, where there is just a rivalry there because, you know, they don't like each other. They, they, but it's within the realm of sport, and, and all, all that stuff helps, I think, a society maybe uh, cleanse or, or move forward or even desensitize itself. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's like they didn't want Jack Johnson fight because they couldn't conceive of a black guy beating a white guy. You know what? Do the fight a hundred times. Let him, you know... And the what the you know in athletics nowadays the black guys you know might might win more might lose more but say it was just fifty fifty that's not all the, it was just fifty fifty the effect of seeing fifty times the white person defeated and the, the black person lets you know that you're not in the way, they, they, that's what they wanted to avoid so let's you know say so we don't avoid it you do it you do it in sport you prove that they're equal you know that every every that we're equal that they're equal that the Jews are equal that the Russians are equal. At the end of the day, one on one with gloves on, you're more equal than in, in, in any other place. You know what I, I mean? Absolutely so, agree. Uh, I think that, that's part of sport, you know. And I think you have to acknowledge it because I, I don't think there's. I, I, I think if I was taking a fighter from Costa Rica to Poland to fight a Polish fighter, what am I going to expect? Well, half the audience probably doesn't like him, so they're going to like me. No. They're all going to be rooting for the Polish guy. Why? Because he's Polish. There's nothing really wrong with that. There's, I, there's nothing really that should surprise us in that, you know? If, if I was going to Chicago with the same Costa Rican kid to fight a, a black kid from Chicago, you know, one of Montel Griffin's fighters, you know, and they were all black people in the audience. Is it going to be a surprise that they're rooting for the you know for the black fighter, you know? You, so I I don't know you know here's where it does you know you have to ask the question is it all right if I'm in an audience you know with a black fighter or I take a black fighter to a white audience and they're in a white play fighting a white guy in a white audience and all the white people are rooting for for the white guy but but should that be more or less the same normality? I, so I, I don't know, you know what I mean? But is that viewed differently? I think it is viewed differently. I, I think it is viewed because of the privilege and things like that that white people sometimes enjoy. So I, I, I don't know, but all of these things can be hashed out around sport, it seems to me. It seems to me like the Olympics, yeah. it seems to me like a lot, you know, a lot in, in, in international terms, you know, um, 
There have been Israeli athletes competing in Abu Dhabi. You know, that's a far different world than the 40s and 50s. You know what I mean? Yes. And that's only in this century, you know, I think that, that they've been able to achieve something that uh, unique, you know? So I, I just, that's all I can do is I can turn to sport. I can, and, and the sport that we love, the, the MMA, the boxing, the, the one-on-one combat sports, uh, there's no uh, – that's where the ethnicity comes out because we don't have all black baseball teams. We don't have, you know, all all white baseball teams or all Mexican baseball teams, you know. In the world, you know, in this international world series and stuff like that. But I'm talking about, you know, what people root for, NFL teams and stuff. Yeah. You know, the, so the, it's not uh, done based on ethnicity anymore. But it does touch you in the boxing world now. Yeah, so well – and, and, you know, it's it still penetrates every aspect of our lives regardless. And, and so, you know, the longer we the longer we keep it in the closet and we don't talk about it, um, the more of a problem it's going to become. And it just, it, feel, it feels like stateside, it feels like there's this time bomb that's been waiting to blow and it suddenly has a fuse. And um, things are kind of scary here. And it, it's, it's different than it was... You know, two years ago, it's vastly different. Um, well, let's just put it this way: let's just say that we know this. We know that when you put two men in a cage or you put two men in a ring together, one of them's going to win and one of them's going to lose. And ethnicity has absolutely nothing to do with it, nor does nationality. It has to do with skill, talent, heart, chin, strength, agility, flexibility, training. But it doesn't intelligence. But it doesn't have anything to do with with where you were born, or to what race. And so, at least with that, we know. And and in our eyes, at the Cage Rage podcast, all men are created and women are created equally, and we want to keep it that way. Um, but we we also are not naive enough to not acknowledge that there is a difference and that tribal. Tribalism is very real. It's very present and current in our lives, and maybe more so now than than in the past several um, decades that we've seen. I think we're seeing a resurgence of it, and hopefully, this shit's going to get itself worked out pretty soon. I, I I don't I don't know. I don't think elections are going to do it, um, but. Maybe, maybe it actually does happen. Maybe somebody actually <laughs> could get the cojones together to actually put together a promotion that's really kind of based on that. Uh, who knows? Maybe, maybe that's a UFC thing. Maybe Golden Boy does that. Um, I don't know what 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 happens there. Okay, tell me this, Miguel, and we'll we'll wrap it up after this. This will be your final. This is your final quiz. So, in a pretend world. De La Hoya says, I'm going to take a Mexican, um, an African-American, um, a, a Jew from New York, and, um, and, and a German. And I'm going to put them all in the same, I'm going to put them all in the same tournament, and they're going to fight, and they all have to fight one another. What's, what's something like that look like? How does it sell? Is it, is it legal? Is it ethical? Just, just, just rant for a minute. Take, take no, five I, on that one. Look, I think you could do it. I think the World Boxing Super Series has put together tournaments now that are very international, very ethnic. You know, you got, you had uh, Regis Prograce, uh, uh, African American uh, from Louisiana, uh, beating Terry Flanagan, who's, you know, a former world champion and a hard-nosed white British guy. Um, you know, they're in a tournament with all kinds of ethnicities. Um, you know, there were Ukrainians in, in previous tournament that won the tournament, uh, along with a British champion in one of them. Uh, you've got fighters from Japan in the Bantamweight tournaments and stuff. So, and then, you know, are you talking about, you know, is there any doubt that, you know, there's a Japanese fighter, the Japanese are going to be rooting for the Japanese guy. <laughs> you know, is, 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 is that a doubt? I mean, they may, they, they may have fans of boxing who would say, sure, I love Canelo, you know. And even if Canelo fought, 
uh, Murata or someone like that, they might even root for Canelo in that situation. But in a straight, hey, I turn on the TV, who are they going to be rooting for? You know what I mean? It, but I think that's normal. I think we, and I think that, that trying to erase that or trying to make pretend that, that doesn't happen is part of why you get into some trouble. I think you do have to embrace some of why we're different, too. You know what I mean? Um, I think that's part of the beautiful of it. So, but but, but let's yes. end the podcast with this. I, we were talking about the book, and if uh, you've got too much energy on your hands and you want to collect guns or something like that, why don't you start collecting old newspapers and old books and stuff and like that unboxing and do something useful for the sport that we love? And the bottom line is, is you know, newspapers and old accounts and stuff like that, they're boxes like Joe Choinsky and things that unless somebody picks them and says, I'm going to do a book on these guys, we're running the risk of having a lot of information just gets, you know, sitting in archives that nobody remembers, you know. There's stuff, oh, the, the Vatican stuff. If you don't read it, there's stuff that's forgotten there. It's forgotten. That's what's going to happen with these boxers if you're not careful. So if you're, you know, if you're an African-American that listens to us, you know, maybe you want to go back and say, you know, that young Peter, you mentioned Peter Jackson. I'll find out more about him. Hey, well, you know, another incredible character. Guy traveled around the world, extra, extra, you know, et cetera, et cetera. Maybe he's doing a, a, a refreshed account of himself, you know. Maybe the books yes. that aren't there, they're not there, you know. Um, if you're an Italian, find yourself an Italian. If you're a Jew, find yourself a Jew. Write a book or at least do some research and do something constructive, you know, with with knowledge and, 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 and with you know, maybe if you're a black guy, find a Jewish boxer. Maybe if you're a Jew, find a black boxer and do it that yeah. way. But get, you know, stop being fucking ignorant, you know? Yeah, right, right. I couldn't have said it better myself, Miguel. That's beautifully said. Um, you know, let, let's – the power of the pen rather than the power of the machine gun. You know, there's something to be said for, for – the written language got us where we're at for a reason. So, um, hey, I think we had a good podcast today. And I think the most important thing that people could probably take away from this is this. Send us information. Send us questions. Comment. Subscribe. Ask us anything you want to know. And if we don't know it, we'll find out. We have the ability to, to, um, uh, to, to grab hold of information and to pursue knowledge in ways that other people cannot possibly fathom. Not only have we lived a great deal of it, but we also have access to archives that you cannot even possibly begin to imagine. So ask us. Tell us. Write me. Say chadillac at the cageragepodcast.com. I want to know about A, B, C, and D boxers or MMA fighters. And I want to know this story. Is this true? Is that true? Ask me. I probably won't know. Miguel probably will. And I'll ask Miguel to find out. And then I'll ask him so it looks like I'm actually smart. He's doing all the heavy lifting. All I've got to do is, you know, host the show. That's why I do it. Because I'm not very bright. Miguel, as always, man, it's been a great podcast. Can't wait to do it again. Um, do you have anything else you want to wrap up with? No, I, I like I said, I enjoy the history um, podcast. Uh, you, you know, we tend to touch on a wider range of subjects. I don't think that's necessarily bad. I think uh, it's a nice twist, and I think uh, you know, by by looking back at the impact of boxing in history and 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 uh, things like that, you know, uh, we're adding to the discussion something constructive. I think I think it's 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 something uh, that uh, I, I'm enjoying doing a lot. Thanks, Chad. Yeah, thank you, Miguel. Um, it's it's a it's a pleasure and an honor. Uh, hey, don't forget to subscribe below. Miguel at the cageragepodcast.com, Chadillac at the cageragepodcast.com, Miguel Iterade on Facebook, Chad Howard Wagner on Facebook, the podcast, uh, the Cage Rage Podcast on Facebook, the Cage Rage Podcast on YouTube. Um, uh, Aaron Kane uh, of uh, Raising Kane Productions. Uh, edits these and after he edits these he posts all of these to our pages as well so if you can't find it anywhere else just go to the to the to the fate to my Facebook page Chad Howard Wagner look for an ugly guy with a kid on his shoulders and that's me and that's my little boy soda pop and you can tap in right there 
and say, friend me, and, and under your friend request, put something like boxing or MMA, so that I know, so that I know that you want to do that, and that you're not, you know, like a hooker or whatever, because that's really annoying. Um, hey, we appreciate everything. Subscribe below, comment, let us know what you think about things. Peace be on passion. Namaste. Yes, it had cost more than the condom I should have used the night you were conceived. <laughs> <laughs>